Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another movie reaction. Today, we're going to be looking at Perfect Blue. Now, this is a Thursday post, and for those of you who are new here, Thursdays are times where I can kind of get out of the schedule, get away from, like, the Patreon polls and everything like that, and kind of look into uh, different types of film and different types of mediums and, you know, really check out things that I kind of want to dive more into. So it kind of gives me... Um, you know, a really cool way to just, you know, break out of the ordinary routine and step into some really interesting uh, displays of media and storytelling. And today, uh, I'm going to be looking into Perfect Blue. Now, for those of you who just happen to pass by, I am a huge anime admirer. I, I love anime. I grew up with it. And um, I mean, all the stories that it told me, all the techniques in terms of filmmaking that you can learn from anime is uh, especially important. And I think something to definitely educate yourself on and always, you know, challenging your perspective in that regard. I think that it's a perfect example on why storytelling and any form of medium is incredibly important. I mean, obviously you have like just Akira, which I was able to watch with a a good friend of mine if you haven't seen that video yet but yeah we were able to really dissect the film and explain why anime as a genre has just like such an important historical and also uh, aesthetic connections to filmmaking and probably inspired some of your favorite films today and you probably don't know of it so yeah like i'm really excited to jump into this now some prior knowledge i did see this a while ago and i mean like this is probably like six years ago because this film came out in 1999 um i remember watching this right after akira and um yeah i think that's about it i know that it's considered one of the classics but i want to be able to look at this with some fresher eyes as me being a filmmaker and i think i can really do some justice in looking at it from a different perspective and hopefully give more appreciation to a film that i've watched uh previously long ago even though it's six years but also that you potentially have watched and maybe you learned something new that you didn't know before or prior so before we jump into it i obviously want to say thank you again to the support to this channel this channel is growing extremely fast um it's a uh, it's pretty cool and uh, i'm doing my best to make sure that i get to every single last one of you so uh, definitely comment below let me know any other anime movies you would love for me to check out or you know really get into as well later on in this channel but yeah i mean a special thank you to the patreon for those of you out there who don't know the patreon members and the patreon community they get the full lens and they also get to have access to these earlier so if that's something that's interest you definitely check out that patreon link it definitely helps and goes a really long way and i can't thank y'all enough so without further ado I'm going to stop talking. Let's get right into Perfect Blue. Oh man, <laughs> these OG anime aesthetics. It's kind of similar to how we see film back in the day and we already get that like, you know, back in the day film look. Well, it definitely has that back in the day anime look. Yeah, so actually, Black Swan, from what I believe, took some inspiration from this anime, especially on the psychological aspect of it. Just a little nod towards how anime could have inspired some of your favorite films we know of now. I love what they're doing. They're kind of going like in and out of, I guess you could say, her performance and then kind of going into her daily life. Good use of editing there. Love this framing here. You can kind of see the two arguing with each other, but in a reflection of the glass. While wow, she was like kind of obviously caught in the middle of that, maybe like showcasing a theme of being displaced. Yeah, this dude, this guy, I do remember his face. The way they drew him was just so, so terrifying. <laughs> obviously that was done purposefully.
Mm. Oh, man. Talk about a haunting transition right there. Like I said, like I love that they that they do that type of stuff because it really shows the symbiotic relationship between her, I guess you could say her um, superficial life compared to her reality. Wow. And this shot right here, so haunting. And then the music just goes out just like that. Oh man, that moment right there, talk about a great combination of editing. I think it's so great how anime movies or just anime in general is able to capture a feeling through their editing. Really build up that anxious anxiety feeling that, you know, it's really hard to bring forth to the table because this isn't like a live action. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, man. Yeah, I completely forgot that this happened. Oh my goodness, man. That is unbelievably haunting. What the heck? Could you imagine someone just stalking you to that level? That extreme level? But I'm really reminded of, especially when you look around, you know, her room is just how much of a, just a young adult she is. Or maybe even like a kid she is, you know, like, it really does remind me of these childhood actors that we kind of grow up with, or childhood cele celebrities. You know, I think we definitely underestimate how much pressure is truly on them, especially at a young age. It's already hard enough being a kid during this society. So I can imagine what it feels like to be in front of the camera 24-7 when you're like 12. Hmm. You know, we keep coming back to this shot outside the window. Man, just to like constantly remind us like, we're not the only ones watching. Man, this is like TMZ, but to like an intensely creepy level. And I love how their the expression on her face slowly goes from innocent to just absolute concern. Just being terrified. This alongside Akira, in my opinion, are one of like the 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 movies that really forefronted anime to showcase like, no, this isn't just you know I guess you could say to a typical person who doesn't watch anime a kid's show. You know, like this is Real storytelling. This is just as, if not more, adult or real than any live action movie when it comes to telling a story. The themes can be just as mature as any other, I guess you could say, American film. <laughs> Oh man, talk about like rack focusing and anime. Mm. You can really see like the subtle reflections that she does while she's talking. It's like those pauses. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Now you guys can understand why I said Black Swan was probably, uh, well, I would say most definitely inspired by this. 
the dualities that kind of live inside of her. They are really able to explore deeply within them because it's animation. Yeah, this scene is hard to watch. Oh my goodness. Even if it's like, you know, in a role or just part of a scene, it's still... Oh, man. Hmm. And these shots of him, like, oh my goodness. He's just there just to keep reminding you that he's there. But what's even scarier is kind of like the duality that starts to showcase itself and come alive in Mima's life. Oh, man. Oh, just that frame right there. That already gives you a depiction of this character and what level he's on. It's out of pocket. That's the level he's on. <laughs> And you keep getting brought back to that window shot. Each time they bring it back, it just... I feel like danger is getting closer and closer. I think it would have been really cool if they showcased, uh, you know, each time they brought it back to that scene, if the window just got closer and closer. What a haunting soundtrack that fits so perfectly with just this scene, this entire scene. Yeah, this film starts to really take shape of itself. It turns into, it transforms into a beast of its own because of this struggle within her character. It's not just the, obviously the physical stalker. But I think the great lengths that it showcases within the struggles that happens inside of her mind. The stalker is kind of just like a facade almost. You peel it away and then you reveal something deeper that's happening. Oh my goodness. It's a deep red that just fills up the screen. Oh man. You just. Wow. Oh my goodness, man. That scene right there, like the chills I get when you see that. Because you know danger's coming, but when you see that haunting image right there with no sound. Oh man. Just brilliant use of storytelling right there. I love that, but it is absolutely creepy. <laughs> it's also interesting, I'm kind of picking up now, is how this, this film is kind of sh like in its theme it's like what it means to become a woman or what they what society thinks it means to become a woman you know to showcase yourself to you know reveal things that you know is probably uncomfortable for you to reveal it's like how society wants you to grow into a woman rather than you being you know able to grow at your own pace And I love how her split self is almost like a false sense of light. It's like glowing. It's almost like, you know, teasing the fact that, you know, she is on her side. Like almost as if she's an angel when in reality she's dangerous. Even the door she opens kind of goes into the light. A false light. A false image. Kind of like the flashes from the camera TVs. And the cameras, flash photography, that false sense of light.
Very iconic shot right here. Very iconic right here. Love how they do shots like that. Like, what? That is incredible. It's so easy to do, obviously, with, you know, live action film. But to do this with animation, talk about the boundaries you're going to have to get through in order to do that. Like, my goodness, that is awesome. This movie is not just great just because of the themes it tackles, but on a technical level, it is unbelievable. Man, these shots are just so good. Like, talk about just intensity. Like, you can feel it. You can feel every step she takes and her going madder and madder. The contrast between real life and her duality just pouncing around playfully, teasing her. Like, again, that false sense of light. And I love how the conversation of illusions, it transfers itself seamlessly from obviously us watching the TV show in this movie to kind of cutting away and showing us reality. <sighs> oh my goodness. Oh, dude. Unbelievable, man. Yo. Like, it is brutal, man. I believe I know what the twist could be. I'm not too sure. I think it might actually be her manager, right? The manager was the one doing these. It's like now the illusion is trying to break into her reality quite literally now. And now officially, the animation has brought forth the complete blending of both reality and I guess you could say kind of like illusion. And we can do nothing but accept that we lost control just to showcase how much loss of control Mima's character is going through. Again, with reflections, they're just showcasing each other over and over again. Mm. Oh, man. Yo, that actually scared me. Oh, my goodness. Yo, this is so just like, what the heck? Ah. Uh. Oh, my goodness. This is just like, oh, my gosh, man. <laughs> this movie is crazy. There you go. Whoa. Just a thud. At this point, you barely even know whether or not things are real or not, you know? It's just so crazy. They do a phenomenal job at capturing this. Mm. 
And that line right there when she says, I'm taking you back to Mima's room. Terrifying. Something off about it. Mm. My goodness, man. Yup. Yup, and that's when you realize it, right there. That haunting realization. Yeah. Yup, and the poster's back up. This is when you start clicking things together, and it's like, what the f- Oh my goodness, man. Oh. Oh, man. Dude, I just got shivers, man. Ugh, that animation. Oh my goodness. And it's just crazy because, like, now that you know exactly who this killer is. And it, it's like it's still being shown as her duality. Like that's what's terrifying. This illusion truly did come to life, possess someone, and took form, and it's trying to kill her. Like, like, oh my goodness! You see, it's just so well done. This is just ah, oh, unbelievably well done. This battle of like, who is she? Who is she? Shown through a very real threat. Like, talk about bringing something to the forefront. An internal struggle brought to the reality. Oh, this scene is crazy, man. This scene is just so brutal. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Wow. And like I said, the false light. Mm. Mm. And right here, she's almost like, it's almost like she's saying goodbye to, you know, that facade of her, that very real side of her, but, you know, she's saying goodbye to the false image of her. Man, what an incredible film this is. Hmm. And that is Perfect Blue, my goodness. All right, everybody, and that basically wraps up Perfect Blue. Like I said prior, this is something I've seen years ago. Uh, so I, I remember just recalling back to the moments that I'm able to really give a lot more attention to and how they first impacted me and how horrified I was of this film because of just the story that it told and not just from the physical uh, demeanor of it, the physical fear uh within this film but the internal one the internal struggle that was happening and how that kind of took form physically and blended seamlessly in and out of an allusion to reality and the duality of that the complexity of it when you're talking about just like even mental illness and you know just false ideologies and like a, a, a false persona you know this was tackled brilliant brilliantly I, in my opinion, through this animation, and it became easily one of my favorite animation, animated movies uh, today, you know, alongside, obviously, Akira and, you know, Princess Mononoke, and, but, but just the maturity of this film is what truly horrifies me, and how real it is, and again, not just because of the stalker, the physical, uh, uh, I guess you could say the physical horrors in this film, but rather the internal ones, the ones that we battle every day and the ones that try to creep in our reality every single day. You can kind of relate this. And I, and I love how they slowly introduce social media, you know, as the uh, 
the catalyst for something like this because we can definitely relate to this now. There's people that are going around not really portraying themselves, but trying to portray themselves as someone else and how that can seamlessly go in and out to the point where you don't really know who you are. When you look in the mirror, can you really tell if that's you or not? So it's something that I really loved and I think animation wise was brought forth in such a creative and artistic way that is unforgettable in this experience. And you know, even a second viewing of it from a filmmaker perspective, I am still floored by just the filmmaking levels of its storytelling and also its daring, uh, its daring acts within this film. But I think it did a phenomenal job and an authentic job in telling its theme and also respecting the story that was told within it. So without further ado, guys, I just obviously want to give a special thank you. This movie was just incredible. And again, one of the inspirations I got from it. Tell me your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you want to see the full length again, please definitely check out that Patreon. But like always, guys, be safe, be healthy, stay hydrated because we are just getting started. Purple jacket pocket full of weed Everything that I should ever need Grab some matches cause they give them free Just like my time Hair pulled back in the backseat